the exploration of space has been on the minds of people for quite some time. And to help assist with that, people are trying to get more and more advanced items into space so that they can look out across the stars and see more than we ever have before. One of the items that has been helping with that is the James Webb Telescope, a new camera telescope that is already giving us a lot to look at and may even unlock some things that we've long wondered. So given that, allow us to show you how the James Webb Space Telescope will study super bright quasars to understand early universe. Quasars. Some of the James Webb Space Telescope's first science investigations will probe the role that bright objects called quasars played in early galaxy evolution. Quasars are distant objects powered by black holes, typically a billion times as massive as our sun. They emit energies that can climb to trillions of electron volts, exceeding the total output of all the stars in a typical galaxy. Scientists, Webb officials said in a 2021 statement, will examine what part quasars play in galaxy evolution during these early times. The team will also use the quasars to study the gas in space between galaxies in the infant universe. Webb's perch in deep space, coupled with its extreme sensitivity to low levels of light and high resolution, will make the most detailed set of observations yet possible of these elusive objects, which have only been known to science for about half a century. Once Webb finishes its commissioning period this summer, the telescope will be tasked with several quasar programs. For example, Webb will look at six of the most distant and luminous quasars to situate these objects in the timeline of galactic evolution. Quasars will also be used to look at gas distribution between galaxies. Scientists are interested in learning more about a period known as the Epoch of Reionization. This epoch happened 13 billion years ago, or less than a billion years after the universe was formed. Galaxies of the era were largely opaque to energetic light, and these objects are thus difficult to observe. The team will use quasars as background light sources to study the gases between us and the quasar, Webb officials stated of the telescope's technique of probing the opaque zones. That gas absorbs the quasar's light at specific wavelengths. Through a technique called imaging spectroscopy, they will look for absorption lines in the intervening gas. Boon of Observation Webb's ability to observe in infrared light will also be a boon for observations of this period, team members said. It will especially be useful because the most distant quasar's light were severely stretched by expansion of space. This phenomenon, known as cosmological redshift, moves light waves to the red or infrared area of the spectrum, where Webb is optimized to make observations. It is hoped that Webb will see enough light from the quasars to look for elements heavier than hydrogen or helium, elements that are called metals by astronomers. These elements were formed in the first stars and the first galaxies and expelled by outflows, Webb officials said. Outflows are another item on Webb's agenda. To better understand how gas accreted by a supermassive black hole embedded in a galaxy pushes and heats up surrounding gas. The outflows can become so strong that they create chaos in the host galaxy and greatly affect the galaxy's evolution. We want to observe these quasars at the moment when they're having the largest impact on their host galaxies. Chris Willett, the Canadian Space Agency's web project scientist, said in the same statement. Willett is also a research scientist at the Herzberg Astronomy and Astrophysics Research Centre of the National Research Council of Canada in British Columbia. So far, scientists know that gas removed from a galaxy will slow the rate of star formation, since stars depend on gas to form and grow. In some cases, outflows will rob the galaxy of so much gas that star formation will cease completely. Scientists also think that outflows are the main mechanism by which gas, dust, and elements are redistributed over large distances within the galaxy, or can even be expelled into the space between galaxies, the intergalactic medium. This process may provoke fundamental changes in the properties of both the host galaxy and intergalactic medium, Webb officials said. This is indeed something interesting, but the catch is that currently, the James Webb is still trying to refine itself, if you will. The first light photo. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, captured its first light image in February. Although this is a great achievement, the actual photo showed that the giant space telescope still needs a lot of work. The International Space Union confirmed this detail, saying that the first light image of JWST was recorded on February 3rd. This week, the three-month process of aligning the telescope began, and over the last day, Webb team members saw the first photons of starlight that traveled through the entire telescope and were detected by the near-infrared camera, 
NERCAM instrument. This milestone marks the first of many steps to capture images that are at first unfocused and use them to slowly fine-tune the telescope. This is the very beginning of the process, but so far the initial results match expectations and simulations. So, what is going to happen now to ensure that the James Webb Telescope works in a way that is, well, usable? NASA went into detail about that as well. A team of engineers and scientists from Ball Aerospace, Space Telescope Science Institute, and NASA's Goodard Space Flight Center will now use data taken with NERCAM to progressively align the telescope. The team developed and demonstrated the algorithms using a 1 6 scale model telescope testbed. They have simulated and rehearsed the process many times and are now ready to do this with Webb. The process will take place in seven phases over the next three months, culminating in a fully aligned telescope ready for instrument commissioning. The images taken by Webb during this period will not be pretty images like the new views of the universe Webb will unveil later this summer. They strictly serve the purpose of preparing the telescope for science. To work together as a single mirror, the telescope's 18 primary mirror segments need to match each other to a fraction of a wavelength of light, approximately 50 nanometers. To put this in perspective, if the web primary mirror were the size of the United States, each segment would be the size of Texas, and the team would need to line the height of those Texas-sized segments up with each other to an accuracy of about 1.5 inches. Scott Acton and Chanda Walker of Ball Aerospace, along with Lee Feinberg of NASA Goodard, walked through the steps to make this happen. With deployment of the mirror segments now complete and the instruments turned on, the team has begun the numerous steps required to prepare and calibrate the telescope to do its job. The telescope commissioning process will take much longer than previous space telescopes because Webb's primary mirror consists of 18 individual mirror segments that need to work together as a single high-precision optical surface. It's not going to be the easiest of processes, but as they say, nothing worth doing is easy. And this is a great example of that. Plus, once they refine things, they'll be able to go and look at the quasars and other mysteries of space that they want to explore. The importance of the James Webb. Needless to say, there are a lot of expectations upon this telescope, and as a result, people are hoping that it can deliver on all of them. The web represents the culmination of decades, if not centuries, of astronomy, says Sarah Seeger, a planetary scientist and astrophysicist at MIT. We've been waiting for this a very long time. Indeed, and as you heard earlier in this video, there are already some big plans in terms of what the James Webb might explore in space. Now. Will it be able to answer all the questions we have about the universe? Definitely not. But as this telescope is something much stronger than the Hubble, it will have the ability to be more than we've had access to in the past. And that's exciting. So we'll just have to wait and see what it does and doesn't deliver, and be patient as it continues to refine itself for the mission to come. So what do you think? What do you think of this look at the James Webb Telescope and how things are looking with it via the things it's observing and meant to observe? Do you feel that we're just a little bit of time away from finding out certain things from the telescope? What do you want to see from some of its pictures for certain parts of space? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time on the channel.